Anthony William Coviello, better known as the medical medium, or the guy who started the celery juice craze, has become quite a famous or infamous figure in the health and diet world. Despite not having any health or medical credentials at all, he calls himself the medical medium because he claims to be in communication with a spirit who gives him information about diseases and illnesses that the medical field hasn't yet figured out. According to him, this information is decades ahead of our current science. He first started to gain popularity in 2015 after he published his first book, Medical Medium, Secrets Behind Chronic and Mystery Illness and How to Finally Heal. In here, he makes claims such as, you will not find these answers anywhere else. This book is unlike anything you've read. You won't find citation after citation references to study after study, because this is fresh, ahead of its time information that comes from the heavens. No other medium does what I do. No one else alive has a spirit voice providing profound, on-target health information with crystal clarity. Four years later, he published Medical Medium Celery Juice, the most powerful medicine of our time, healing millions worldwide, which quickly became a global health fad. Though Anthony's website has a lengthy legal disclaimer where he says that he does not render medical, psychological, or other professional advice or treatment, nor does he provide or prescribe any medical diagnosis, treatment, medication, or remedy, he ironically also claims to have helped tens of thousands of patients heal from ailments that have been misdiagnosed or ineffectively treated. He says that he can see into the body like a supercharged MRI scan to diagnose all blockages, infections, trouble areas, past problems, and even soul fractures. You can find thousands of personal testimonies from people who believe Anthony has correctly diagnosed their health issues and that his protocols he prescribed for them have significantly helped them heal or even completely cured them of what they were told by doctors were lifelong illnesses. Dozens of celebrities have endorsed his work, including Miranda Kerr, Kim Kardashian, Dwayne Johnson, Sylvester Stallone, Adam Sandler, Pharrell, Robert De Niro, Tony Robbins, the list goes on and on. So he must be onto something, right? I mean, there are tons of people that have said that they tried everything and medical medium protocols were the only thing that worked for them. You can go to any video or Instagram post that he's made and you'll see comment after comment of people thanking him for changing their life. As crazy as it sounds that he talks to this spirit who gives him advanced medical information, it must be true, right? Because how else would there be so many positive testimonials, especially from celebrities? Well, that's how his fans tend to look at it. There's also a lot of people who see Anthony as a fraud and a con artist who mixes truths and lies together to profit off desperate people and feed his own ego. If you're a follower of Medical Medium, I ask that you actually listen to the video before just labeling me as a hater who's closed-minded, whose opinion isn't valid because it's not the same as yours, and just going straight to the comment section to share some anecdote without actually watching my video. You know, you may believe that Anthony's protocols have helped you, and they very well may have, but that doesn't mean that other people aren't allowed to criticize him or aren't allowed to question him. If you're not a fan or haven't even heard of Anthony, buckle up because there's a lot going on here. It's a very interesting yet alarming tale. Usually I wouldn't talk about medical or health topics like this because I have no expertise, but in this case, neither does Anthony, so we're equally unqualified. But more than that is the fact that he doesn't argue that there is scientific evidence for his beliefs. Medical medium is not promoting science-based medicine, evidence-based medicine. He promotes spirit-based medicine. So I don't need medical expertise because I'm not going to be sitting here going through these studies talking in depth about all these different health things and how he's wrong about all this stuff. I mean a little bit, but like not that much, um, or going through like studies saying, oh, there's, there's no studies for this thing, there's no studies to back up that claim. That would be futile because no one is arguing that. His fans are not saying that there is evidence to back up anything he says, really. And if there is evidence, it's only because of him. He was the one that inspired that evidence. 
Instead, what I think needs to be addressed is the validity of anecdotes as evidence because that's really all there is. Um, and anecdotes are very convincing to the types of people that become his fans. And so I want to talk more about that kind of like logic and epistemology, which is the study of knowledge, then general science and medicine. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about other things such as what is known about Anthony, which isn't much. I'll explain some of his like basic main claims right at the beginning so you can kind of get an understanding for what he's all about if you're not very familiar with him. We'll look into the origin story of spirit and I'll share why I'm a little skeptical of that whole, de whole deal. Later, we're going to dive back into some more of his um, pretty out there claims. And then also I want to bring up his ridiculous and sketchy response to critics and how I think how he addresses that affects the way that his fans act and view him in a way. And so yeah, with that all being said, let's just get into it. So Anthony gets all of his health information from a spirit called Spirit, also called Spirit of Compassion. He says that there's no higher spirit than this one except for God. In his book, Medical Medium, he says, I receive health information that's incredibly accurate, much more so than any other medium alive. For decades, Anthony did phone consultations where it's claimed that he could accurately diagnose everybody um, with whatever health condition they had, and he would do this by simply asking Spirit what was wrong with them, and Spirit would just tell him, and then Anthony could relay that information to the person. Spirit was also able to always know exactly what this per person needed to do what kind of dietary changes this person needed in order to heal from these health problems. And so due to this, in Anthony's other work, uh, he is frequently accused by haters of practicing medicine without a license. Anthony lives in Florida, and so according to Florida Statute 458.305, Practice of medicine means the diagnosis, treatment, operation, or prescription for any disease, pain, injury, deformity, or other physical or mental condition. And he obviously like admits to not having a license. And so it's like in a technical, observable way, and even the way that Anthony promotes himself, it's clear that he is diagnosing people and he's also prescribing treatment to people. Um, but I think the lengthy legal disclaimer that he has on his website may protect him from ever being prosecuted? I'm not sure. Anyways, it's been reported by many different people that he would charge $500 for a 30 minute phone consultation. It may have been cheaper in the earlier days, I'm pretty sure it was from what numbers I've seen, um, but towards the end, $500 for 30 minutes. He doesn't do these anymore though, and instead he focuses on putting this information that he has gained over the years from spirit into his books. And so to sum up this information into like the main points, Anthony seems to promote that almost all health issues that are like chronic illnesses, mystery illnesses, autoimmune diseases, those kind of things, not like a broken toe, obviously, but almost all these types of health issues are caused by the Epstein-Barr virus or EBV. It's a member of the herpes virus family and is one of the most common viruses in the world. The CDC says that 90% of adults have antibodies that show they've had EBV at some point in their life and is most commonly spread through body fluids like saliva. Now there are links between Epstein-Barr and some cancers and autoimmune diseases and other things. Um, but to be clear, because some people in the medical medium community do like to twist this, these links have been studied and observed for decades. For example, a fan of Medical Medium told me, over the years, science has caught up with some of his claims. Most recently, as an example, that MS is caused by EBV. He has this published in his book, books from years ago. His earliest book is from 2015. They've been doing studies on EBV and MS since at least 1980 was the earliest one that I could find. And there were many done in the 90s and 2000s that show a correlation. Although I didn't read through these studies, so I don't know how strong the correlation is. Anthony promotes that he is far ahead of science. And so a lot of his fans just take his word for that and they don't do any independent research to realize that that's not true in a lot or possibly even every case. For example, when it comes to cancer, one review on EBV and cancer states that Epstein-Barr contributes to about 
1.5% of all cancers. Another review states that EBV was the first human virus to be directly implicated in carcinogenesis, which is the formation of a cancer. And I believe this was discovered in 1964, which was over 50 years before he wrote his first book. But Anthony says that EBV has created a secret epidemic and claims that it's responsible for most cases of these diseases and illnesses. Many people who share their stories of having phone consultations with him will say that they were diagnosed by him with Epstein-Barr virus or he told them that that's the cause of various other health problems that they had. I couldn't give you an exact percentage, but I would say it's like the vast majority of people. Like it's kind of a running joke in the medical medium hater community. That's like if you were talking to Anthony and you said, oh, I have a pimple, he's gonna say it's caused by Epstein-Barr. If you say that, your ear hurts, Epstein-Barr. Your hair is falling out, Epstein-Barr. Everything is Epstein-Barr. So when it comes to his treatment, or legally not treatment, um, this is referred to as medical medium protocols. That's what people call them. And so the main things that he recommends that are part of these protocols for most people, um, the first one for everyone, you gotta drink the celery juice. It has to be exactly this way minimum 16 ounces a day on an empty stomach right when you wake up. It cannot be mixed with anything else. No adding lemon juice, no adding anything to make it taste better. You can't even add water. It has to be the exact way that Anthony says, otherwise it won't work. It's a very finicky miracle cure. Next, take certain vitamins. On his website, he has a list of over 150 vitamins and supplements that he makes money from if you buy them through the website because they all have Amazon affiliate links. Of course, you're not supposed to take all the vitamins, like it would be different based on what health problem you're dealing with and trying to heal, but he does say that if you stay on a supplement that's not medical medium recommended while trying to heal with medical medium information, you may not see the benefits you want to. So you have to take these exact supplements from these exact brands that he's telling you to. And I assume um, they're probably less effective if you buy them without using the affiliate link too, you know? He says that you shouldn't eat dairy, eggs, gluten, soy, corn, pork, canola oil, and some other things. Um, but you should eat a diet rich in whole foods, fruits and vegetables. You can do his protocols as a meat eater, but you can also do them completely plant-based. And he also says don't eat a diet high in protein or fat. So looking at that, some of it's supported by science, some of it's not, and some of it's highly debated. Like eating a lot of whole foods, for example, that's a big part of what he promotes. And yeah, that's going to help a lot of people feel better and get healthier, especially anyone who's coming from a past of like a really unhealthy junk food type of diet. So the science supports that and I would totally agree that that has helped a lot of people become healthier and relieve many symptoms from any disease that they would have. Especially having people cut out the huge allergens like soy, dairy, and gluten. Many people have intolerances to those and they have no clue that they have intolerances. So when they cut out those three things like like, there, that's going to make a ton of people feel better because there are a ton of people who have unknown intolerances to them. On the other hand, his claims about celery juice, which we're gonna go into and I'll like verbatim quote him later, um, he calls it a miracle juice, you know? He promotes it as like a healing solution for everyone with every disease, essentially. And that's not supported by science, obviously. When it comes to then macros and him promoting a high carb, low protein, low protein, low fat diet, that's something that's highly debated, so I'm not even gonna go into it. But honestly, that sums a lot of it up. Like, there's more things that he promotes, but this video is not just a, going to be a list of everything Anthony William promotes. There's other things I wanna talk about. So those are the main things. A huge portion of his, of his brand is Epstein-Barr is the problem and celery juice is the solution. And Anthony knows that because Spirit told him. But where did the spirit come from? So let's look at the alleged origins of spirit and Anthony's gift. He says, My introduction to cancer came at age four at the same time that I first received my gift from spirit. I was seated at the dinner table when spirit appeared to me, instructing me to inform my grandmother that she had lung cancer. Though I didn't know what the term meant, I repeated it, much to the shock of everyone at the table. The doctor soon confirmed that the revelation was true. Afterward, I asked Spirit how it had happened. 
why had my grandmother gotten cancer? Spirit answered that it was a combination of a virus, Epstein-Barr virus, plus a variety of toxins in the form of heavy metals, DDT, and other pesticides, solvents, plastics, and petroleum. The words were foreign to me at that young age, though I could tell they were serious. Since then, for the entire time I've had this gift, I've taken cancer personally. Over the decades, I've helped countless people who are battling cancer to find answers, safety, and healing. So my views on this story, you know, I probably have like two to three memories from the age four, but I understand when you go through something like really just crazy and kind of shocking like this, that's something that you're going to remember even if it's happened a long time ago or at a really young age. But at the same time, I really still find it hard to believe that a four-year-old would remember the specific terms that Spirit told him um, that he says that he'd never heard of. like. Epstein-Barr virus, plus a variety of toxins in the form of heavy metals, DDT, and other pesticides, solvents, plastics, and petroleum. Okay, I've said that sentence twice in the past minute, and I don't think that most people would be able to verbatim repeat every one of those words, even though we're all adults, or like, older than the age of four, and I just said them recently. So to me, that part is completely unbelievable and just makes me question the whole rest of it. Um, and because of that, I figured, like, I wanted to try to find any statements from family members, like, anyone that knew him as a child, or s specifically the people who were at this dinner table with him, but I couldn't find anything through, like, a Google search, and so I decided, you know, maybe he's, like, posted about these people in an Instagram post, but it would be pretty hard to find that through a Google search, so what I decided to do was ask the medical medium subreddit, because those people are like big fans of him, and if if anyone's going to know, I feel like it would be somebody on there. So I made up a little story so that it would seem like I'm like a fan of Anthony. Um, I just said that like my mom doesn't believe in spirits and stuff, so she wants information on if any of his family members have spoken about this uh, situation publicly. And I got a couple responses. Apparently 450 people have viewed it, but only three people commented. The first person said, best bet is to use the info to change your life and show her that it's not important for people to believe that spirit gave Anthony Whaling the info. What's important is the droves of people healing. That is one thing that you will see in the medical medium community is that everything is always diverted back to anecdotes. Every question, every criticism, just look at all the anecdotes, just look at all the anecdotes. And so I followed up saying basically that wasn't helpful. And the person said, Anthony William keeps his private life private and family don't speak out either. There is no real focus on trying to prove his gifts are real or that the insights are from spirit. Someone else said, he keeps his family life private, not public. And the last person says, Instagram has lots of success stories related to medical medium healing. You could curate a bunch to show your rents some real world results. So essentially, there's no information about any of his family members, no one to corroborate this story, it's just his word. Like obviously the guy doesn't have to share every detail of his personal life, but there's such little personal information out there on him for somebody that's as big of a public figure as he is, that it's very very uncommon and it I think it's a red flag, it makes me wonder what is he hiding, and it just makes me very skeptical of him in general and this story. For example, he's never made his age public, like it's completely unknown, and a lot of the times, I mean Anthony has 4 million Instagram followers, like he's a pretty big public figure, and even if they themselves, the public figures, don't put their age out there, like people will find it somehow. But his age has been reported all over the place. Like those different kind of websites that say people's birthdays, he's been reported as being 27 years old, 30 years old. I saw somebody say it and read it that on a live stream he said that he was 60. His website though says that he was a child in 1975, so I'd say he was born sometime around 1965 to 1970, making him in his 50s most likely. I think the lack of having any family members publicly, um, you know, speaking about him and supporting him, and also him not ever saying how old he is and it being hard to find or impossible to find, I guess. I think it makes him less credible. I don't know why these things need to be kept a secret. Um, of course, he doesn't have to put all of his family members' personal information out there, but just not even having his mom, 
a sibling, a cousin, grandma, if she's, grandma probably wouldn't still be alive, but like any of these people cannot say, oh, like this is my son, Anthony, and it's, it was just so crazy when he said at the dinner table at age four that grandma had lung cancer. Like no one can even come out and say that. It's weird. Like we know his full name, and that he lives in Florida, and probably a couple other little random details, but I would just expect a little more from an honest person. You don't have to put your whole life out there, but just being very, very secretive when you're a big public figure who claims to have these crazy beliefs and no one in your real life can corroborate them, I don't see the reason for not putting these things out publicly if he's not trying to hide something. That's not the only thing that raises red flags for me. I personally don't believe in spirits or anything supernatural, but I'm open-minded to the possibility that they exist. I just haven't seen convincing evidence, so I'm withholding belief until that happens. But even if I did believe in them, there'd still be a little something off about this spirit of compassion for me. Say you are the spirit with all this advanced medical knowledge, much of which has not yet been discovered by science, but you're the spirit of compassion, so you, you feel bad for all these people on earth and you want to help them get better and heal themselves of all these diseases. What would you do? Would you choose to pick one single person out of 8 billion people and only give information to that person starting out when they're a little four-year-old child. Spirit is so smart and knowledgeable that, for example, he can tell Anthony that there are actually 60 types of Epstein-Barr virus, um, even though medical professionals only know about one of them. So Anthony goes around sharing this information. Most medical professionals are not going to believe this because it hasn't been demonstrated through science yet, right? So does Spirit tell Anthony or anyone how to figure this stuff out? I mean, if he has all this knowledge, he should be able to give out information on how to conduct tests and whatever that could detect these 59 other varieties. But apparently not. I guess that's just way too simple of a solution. Like, let's just tell this stuff to this one person with no higher education, no medical or scientific experience at all, instead of people, multiple people, choosing to talk to a ton of different people who are already medical professionals, already scientists, and Spirit could tell them how to conduct these tests so that we can find these different types of diseases or different strains of diseases, detect the prevalence of them, detect the causes of them. Like, wouldn't that lead to so much more of like a medical health revolution than just telling one guy. I'm not sure if Anthony or Spirit have ever addressed this, but my guess is if they did, you'd get an answer related to some conspiracy about the corruption of Big Pharma. That's what it always comes down to for alt-med promoters. Big Pharma won't let tests and studies be conducted to show the real causes and solution for common diseases because they make money off the sick. Unlike Anthony, who, well, you know, he does make money off the sick too, but let's just ignore that. I'm sure some of Anthony's fans think that anyone who talks bad about him is a shill for Big Pharma. You know, Big Pharma mainly does, I think, like to reach out to 22-year-old commentary YouTubers like me who are not doctors, scientists, medical professionals at all, aren't even studying that in school, are environmental science students in college, um, but give me money to make videos bashing medical medium because their main goal is uh, people getting less help from them or from him so that they stay sick and then Big Pharma continues to make all the money, you know, Spirit, he chose to reach out to a four-year-old little boy. Big Pharma also not going for any educated person, just going for a YouTuber. I guess they have the same logic. Does Lily believe that Mama's a show for Big Pharma? She said no. She don't believe it. What's the evidence that Big Pharma pays people to bash medical medium online? Well, the evidence is that it just makes sense. <laughs> I didn't do any research, it just makes sense. That's what people always say who like have these Big Pharma conspiracies. Their belief in it is always just because it just makes sense. But also it's like, yeah, I do think pharmaceutical industries want to make money and will do 
awful, unethical, greedy things to get that. Maybe they do want to make people stay sick so they can profit more. But even if that is true, at the same time, that doesn't mean that they have an agenda towards whatever one diet or one supplement or one lifestyle or one whatever thing that you think is the secret cure to everything. There's a ton of panaceas out there and everyone thinks that theirs is the real deal. In reality, all of these magical cures have little to no supporting scientific evidence, but a lot of anecdotes, and the people who buy into them are those who prefer stories over science because they question science more than they question Barbara on Facebook who says her migraines went away because she started drinking celery juice every morning. If Barbara thinks it was the celery juice that got rid of the migraines, then it 100% was. She could not possibly be mistaken, right? She couldn't be leaving out any details about any other thing that she was trying to get rid of them. A lot of people who are struggling with their health will try multiple different things at once and then if they find relief, they'll pick one thing to attribute those results to. They won't account for the other possible treatments, they won't account for the placebo effect. You know what does account for those things though? Scientific studies. I've seen Anthony whine about how there are no studies on celery juice and chronic illness, but it's like, well, he can't use some of his money, I assume he's a millionaire, to fund one study? Like, not, not even one, you know, just to get the research started. I mean, I understand that him funding a study could be kind of a strike against it because he has a vested interest in it, but like, what, he can't just give some money to a university and say, hey, will you study this? I mean, I don't know how the whole process works, but I know that he could give someone money, right? I don't think he would ever do that, though, because the lack of studies gives him a perfect opportunity to act like they're not doing any studies because they know celery juice is this miraculous medicine and they want to keep that a secret to keep people sick. Again, no evidence for that, it just makes sense to some people. But you know what makes sense to me? That Anthony likes how much money he makes from the sick too. You know, I said that he used to charge $500 for a 30 minute consultation. He would basically, like, he had like a ton of people wanting these consultations and he would pick them randomly so everyone had equal chance, but it's like, I don't see why he would need to make them so expensive if not just out of greed. Having a lower income is associated with having more health problems, so in my opinion, it would have been more compassionate and admirable for him to make his consultations accessible to those with lower income. But I'd have to assume that most of his clients were middle to upper class because $500 for 30 minutes is a lot of money to most people. It's also been reported that his clients were not allowed to record the consultations. And it seems possible that that may have been done so that he could avoid being accountable, uh, being held accountable for getting things wrong. Um, I can think of another reason that he would ne want people to not record them, but if you can, let me know. That being said, he does now no longer do the consultations and he puts all of his information into books, like I mentioned earlier, which makes them more accessible to everybody, but at the same time, I don't think that he did that for that reason. I'm sure that he's making more money off the books because he they're, they're bestsellers, you know, he's sold a lot of copies, so I'm pretty sure he makes more money and spends less time on them, so I'm not exactly convinced that he's not a money-hungry person. Something else I'm confused about is this TV interview he did with the Hallmark Channel where one of the hosts volunteers to get a reading from him and I'm gonna put the video up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about but I'll also describe it if you don't want to watch. Basically he keeps like moving his hands in just this weird way around her shoulder areas and he does this too with Kim Kardashian when he's giving her a reading it's like he's just moving his hands up and down by her shoulders, her head, like maybe lightly touching um, at some points, but mainly like hovering them above like an inch from the body. And I'm not saying he does this in a creepy or inappropriate way. The thing that I don't understand about it is why does he need to be like really close to this person doing these hand movements when he supposedly was doing phone consultations for decades, hundreds, thousands of miles away from people where he obviously wouldn't be able to do these things. Like he should have been able to just stay seated in the interview, two feet away from the host, not do any hand movements to get a reading. He even confirms this himself in his medical medium book. He says, Another way I'm different from most mediums is that I have no problem getting information about the health of my family and friends or about my own health. Again, because spirit is separate from me, all I have to do is ask and he tells me what I want to know. This is one of the things that makes me unique. 
It's a bit fishy if you ask me. So is the fact that he has this obsession with being like unique. You know, as Spirit apparently says in the medical medium book, only one or two people per century are given this gift. It is not a typical intu intuitive or psychic ability. Anthony loves to point out that he is special. He's different. There's no one else that can do what he does. He has access to knowledge that no one else has. He is more accurate than any other medium. He, like, he talks about himself in such a narcissistic, egotistical way. And it just doesn't seem like something that you'd expect from somebody who is not doing this for his own personal gain. When I first watched Anthony speak in YouTube videos, I got this weird feeling about him that I wasn't really sure how to describe um, or really what it was until I read an article from, some, from someone who said that he sounded like a salesman. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what it is. Like, he sounds like he is trying to sell something. And an example of what kind of makes me feel like this is he always refers to his information, his knowledge as secrets, which is a way that a, a lot of salespeople use to entice people into buying their product. In the medical medium book, he writes, This book unveils many of Spirit's most precious medical secrets. It's the answer for anyone who's suffering from a chronic condition or a mystery illness that doctors haven't been able to resolve. The secrets this book contains will eventually be recognized by the scientific community. It reminds me of the Law of Attraction movie that's called The Secret. You know, people are more interested in things that sound exclusive and like they're getting knowledge that no one else knows about or very, very few people know about. It's a very good sales tactic. Anyways, there are of course other things that make me skeptical of him that are going to be kind of mentioned throughout the rest of the video, but I want to move on to some of his other claims that are of course secret information that doctors and medical communities and scientists don't yet know about. Some of these, I'm just going to read you exactly what he says and I'm not going to provide any of my commentary, but others I will. So first off, he believes that glucose levels play a role in getting or not getting PTSD. If someone's glucose storage is low, she or he could get PTSD just from a flat tire, while someone with sufficient glucose storage could witness an armed robbery and tell a story to a friend over dinner that same day unruffled. He says that certain foods can create a glucose storage bin that helps prevent life disruptions from turning into PTSD. In combination with toxins, Epstein-Barr virus is the virus responsible for thyroid cancer. EBV is also responsible for breast cancer, liver cancer, almost all lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, women's reproductive cancers, leukemia, and many more. It's easy to think that a mother and daughter who look alike and sound alike and both develop thyroid cancer in their lifetimes get that same cancer because of genes. That's what we're supposed to think because it keeps us from investigating outside sources. While of course facial features and vocal cords are genetic, disease isn't. Here's the real equation. Virus plus toxins equals cancer. I believe that celery juice is a miracle juice. Celery juice is teeming with powerful anti-inflammatory properties. This means it's highly beneficial for people who suffer from chronic and mystery illnesses, including conditions labeled autoimmune. Bear with me as I list all these things off. It, the list does end eventually, okay? Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, Lyme disease, migraines, vertigo, celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, diabetes, psoriasis, eczema, acne, lupus, Guillain-Barre syndrome, sarcoidosis, Raynaud syndrome, Meniere's disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, gout, bursitis, bloating, intestinal cramping, distension, acid reflux, vertigo, again, constipation, restless leg syndrome, tingles, numbness. All of these symptoms and illnesses are mysteries to medical communities, even though they have names. Their true causes are not yet known by medical research and science. Okay, so this one I want to talk about. Like, I understand that some of these things do not have known causes. I mean, I have the first one that he listed, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. From what my doctor told me, from my own research, there is no medical consensus on what the cause of this is. So, I agree to an extent. Um, but other things like vertigo, diabetes, Lyme disease, those are mysteries to medical communities. Like that's news to me and I don't think these medical communities 
would agree on that. Um, but I think the part to pay attention to is probably Anthony saying that their true causes aren't known yet. Because for example, Anthony does not believe that Lyme disease is caused by ticks. That's something that like everyone knows Everyone knows the cause of every medical website that you look at is going to talk about how Lyme disease is caused by a bacteria called Borrelia, which is from ticks. The CDC, Mayo Clinic, WebMD, John Hopkins Medicine, the NIH, American Academy of Dermatology, I could go on and on. But Medical Medium says, even if bacteria such as Borrelia are present, they're not causing what makes Lyme patients suffer. I actually couldn't find what he thinks is causing the problem because every little description I could find of this, it just said like, read his book, blah, 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 to find out more. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's probably Epstein-Barr. Like, you know, science shows that vertigo is caused often by inner ear problems, but medical medium says it's caused by, you guessed it, Epstein-Barr. Celery is able to starve pathogens. Plus, it contains a multitude of undiscovered mineral salts that act together as an antiseptic. Medical research and science have not yet discovered the different varieties of sodium in celery, nor how beneficial they are. I don't get this. Like, how is it that we cannot find salt in a vegetable in 2022 with our advancements in technology? It just seems a little implausible that we haven't discovered varieties of sodium in celery, especially because sodium is an element, Na. You know, it's on the periodic table of the elements. There is only one of it. There's not multiple different types of sodium. Like I thought for a second, maybe it has something to do with different isotopes, which isotopes are like, it's the same element. It just has a different number of neutrons. Um, but there's 22 isotopes of, of celery, of sodium, and only one is stable. The rest are radioactive, so I'm pretty sure he's not saying that there are radioactive isotopes of sodium in celery. Like, sure, there's different types of salt, like Himalayan salt, sea salt, table salt, but that's not like... I, I don't think that's what he means. <laughs> This next quote from him, I also don't understand what he's trying to say. I even asked somebody who majored in chemistry about these two quotes from him and and, and he didn't think they made any sense either. Um, so Anthony says, when you eat, food quickly travels down to your stomach to be digested with the help of hydrochloric acid. Although science hasn't discovered this yet, hydrochloric acid isn't just one acid, it's actually a complex blend of seven acids. Looking at this from a chemistry standpoint, hydrochloric acid is hydrogen chloride, which is one hydrogen atom, one chlorine atom, together in a bond and put into an aqueous solution, like water. That's what hydrochloric acid is. It's a type of acid. It, that, it is the name for one type of acid. If you do anything else, like add any other atoms, change it in any way, it becomes a different type of acid. One acid cannot be seven types of acid. That is completely logical. It does not, it's not possible. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm so confused by what he means by that. Next quote from him. Then there's other experts who want a piece of celery juice's fame and want to claim it as their own. It's common now to hear experts saying celery juice is indeed helpful, but they taint it and try to make it their own by putting their own spin on it, such as blending it versus juicing it, or adding collagen, activated charcoal, apple cider vinegar, water, or other foods such as apple and lemon to it. The sad truth is that by doing this, they are not promoting what will actually heal people. 16 ounces or more of straight celery juice on an empty stomach every morning. There's a distinct reason celery juice is meant to be consumed solo and in the specific quantity recommended by Anthony William. Every time an expert tries to make celery juice their own by changing it, they're robbing people of their right to heal with celery juice. 
They're also preventing the people who are living with symptoms and conditions from knowing the source celery juice came from, which means they won't have access to the other advanced medical medium healing information that could help them. I love how if it's not done exactly Anthony's way, then it will literally do nothing for you. Like you only drink 10 ounces, no healing powers. You blend it, no healing powers. Eat an apple beforehand, no healing powers. Add literal water to it, no, no healing powers. It has to be his way or the highway. And he acts like these experts who don't do it his way are causing harm to people, robbing people of their right to heal. He uses very emotionally provocative language just as any good salesman would. I already mentioned this one, but I wanted to talk about it again. So he says, medical communities are aware of only one version of EBV, but there are actually over 60 varieties. Claims like these are hard to falsify because it's like, you know, he's saying, we don't know about these things yet, but we will in the future, or the medical communities will in the future. But it's like, how can you disprove something that someone is claiming hasn't happened yet or can't happen yet? Um, it's like if I came, to someone and said, oh yeah, a demon told me that the world is going to end in 40 years. Well, you can't disprove that that happened. You can in 40 years if the world doesn't end then. But it's like some of his claims aren't really testable because even if we test it for them and we don't find what he's saying, he's just going to say like, oh, you just don't have the proper tests. You're not doing it the right way. Science can't figure it out yet because it's not advanced enough, blah, blah, blah. And so it's it's always the fault of science like sure you could prove him wrong but he would never accept that he's been proven wrong last quote i want to share medical research and science don't yet know that there isn't merely one type of shingles virus but 31 varieties and counting so kind of similar to the last one we we only know about one but there's a bunch but i thought this was interesting because like what does it mean by 31 and counting like shouldn't spirit know the exact amount or does he just mean that there are more that are going to arise in the future like there's 31 right now but they just keep growing in number <laughs> so yeah he has some pretty out there claims but there are many people who believe them they believe them because he said them and there's many people who believe just everything he says because they believe that the amount of positive testimonials is proof that all of, his, all of his information is accurate. I watched a video where someone said that the best lies are based on truth. And so it's like medical medium could take some things that are true and some things that are lies or just falsehoods. And people who follow him and trust him are going to take everything as truth. So it's like it may be true that eating a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole foods is good for you, but does that mean that eating a diet high in glucose can prevent you from getting PTSD? Celery juice may be a good way to start the day, but is that because it's a miracle cure or is it because it's hydrating or is it placebo? He's combining real health science with not science and this is what I believe leads to many people feeling better and relieving themselves of their symptoms, on his protocols, but then other people seeing a lot of the stuff he says as being completely ridiculous. I think both are true because there's a lot of stuff that he says that is accurate and there's a lot of stuff that I don't think is accurate. But let's talk about some of the problems with anecdotes, yet why they are still so convincing to some people. I'm not trying to be mean because I know medical medium supporters, like I'm sure they all have a lot of good virtuous qualities, but I don't think they're typically the type of people who are very scientifically literate. Uh, you know, they may have taken science classes in school and understood what the mitochondria does, but they don't have a solid understanding of and appreciation for the scientific method. Therefore, they consider anecdotes to be data, and the more anecdotes, the stronger the data. They don't have the scientific literacy to understand the problems with basing an entire belief system 
on anecdotes. And it's like, sure, it's every individual's responsibility to educate themselves on science, but I think what it really comes down to is a failure of the school systems across the world. I mean, I can really only speak for the US system, though that's the only one I know, but I know here, critical thinking is not taught in school. What's taught is how to listen to a teacher tell you something, and then you remember it for a test. We don't spend as much time learning how to differentiate between good evidence and bad evidence, learning how to apply skepticism, um, what cognitive biases are, how to identify bad arguments or fallacies, or learning about logic and epistemology. Epistemology, if you don't know, it's the theory of knowledge, especially with regard to its methods, validity, scope, and the distinction between justified belief and opinion. And this is a subfield of philosophy, which I feel like more people should familiarize themselves with. I'm not an expert by any means, but I think especially if you're a follower of medical medium, learning about these things that I just listed, not just epistemology, but the other things like fallacies and cognitive biases, those are things that I think are actually really fun to learn about. And so I'm gonna link stuff regarding all this below in my sources if you're interested and wanna check it out. What's happening with a lot of medical mediums, followers, anecdotes, is that they're committing something called a post hoc logical fallacy. This happens when someone argues X happened before Y, therefore X caused Y. I started drinking celery juice and then my acne went away, therefore celery juice caused my acne to go away. This type of argument is fallacious, meaning it uses invalid reasoning and therefore can be rejected. You can't determine causation that way. There are other possibilities of what caused the acne to go away. And some might feel like, well, that's the only explanation I can think of. Like, I don't know what else it could be, therefore it must be that. That's another type of logical fallacy called an argument from ignorance. Another aspect of this is that people who are following medical medium protocols like all the way or the majority of them, you know, they're not just drinking the celery juice, they're doing multiple different things. Um, like they're probably making those changes in a short time period, maybe not all in the same day, but it's like when you start doing 10 new things in your life, drinking slur juice, eating a high carb diet, cutting out gluten, cutting out dairy, drinking more water, taking certain vitamins, etc. And then your autoimmune disease symptoms start to improve drastically. You do not get to decide that all 10 things played a role and that therefore medical medium protocols help with autoimmune diseases. You also don't get to pick one of those things and say it's the main thing that helps. You have to admit that you don't know unless you're basing your assumption on like research, scientific evidence, but that's not what ha is happening here. So it doesn't apply. It's like, say your Hashimoto's gets better after following medical mediums protocols. It literally could have just been the fact that you cut out gluten, that you're that you saw improvements in your health. That doesn't lend validity to him getting top secret information from spirit. That doesn't mean that Epstein-Barr virus is the cause of all of the world problems. When I went vegan seven years ago, my digestion improved. That's a true fact that I've observed. It was almost always bad for the first 14 years of my life and has been almost always good for the past seven. Um, but does that mean that going vegan improves digestion? No, not necessarily. It could have been from the fact that I was eating more fiber. It could have been from the fact that maybe I had a dairy intolerance that I didn't know of and cutting out dairy led to improved digestion. It could have been something else. There's a multitude of different explanations for what could have caused my digestion to improve. But how could I know the actual reason unless there was some sort of testing that was done to figure it out? I, I have to admit that I don't know. If it was a dairy intolerance, then just cutting out dairy and not going vegan could have improved my digestion. If it was the fiber, simply eating a higher fiber non-vegan diet could have improved my digestion. So it's not that I don't come to the conclusion that going vegan improves digestion. And so I think the same kind of thing is what should be applied here with medical medium protocols. You might not need to necessarily follow all of his different protocols in order to make improvements to your health. But yeah, following all of them is going to, like changing a ton of different things, it's more likely that one of those things is going to be the change that you need in order to improve your health. Um, but it's probably gonna be different for each person. You can't say that all of his health recommendations are accurate and going to help everyone because if he's telling people to make all these changes, you cannot determine which change is affecting people. And it's gonna be different for different people, I assume. You know. Another thing is like celery juice, it might help you, but going against his demands and adding a little water, probably not gonna change anything. Anecdotes don't tell you what percentage of people the celery juice didn't work for. 
even if they did exactly as Anthony said they were supposed to. They also don't tell you how many people healed without it or with other methods, and if those other methods have higher percentages of healing rates. Without that information, you cannot determine how effective the juice is. Most people who try celery juice and nothing happens to them, they're probably not going to share about that online because it's boring, and even if they do, it's not going to reach as many people as some miraculous healing story. One of the other reasons it won't reach as many people is that Anthony is known for deleting comments and blocking people who criticize him or disagree with him on his social media pages. Of course, these are anecdotes. People, I've seen a lot of people say, Anthony blocked me, Anthony deleted my comments, blah, blah, blah. These are anecdotes and they might not be true, but why can't we just accept them as truth? I mean, come on. That's what his entire community does with all the positive anecdotes and it just makes you feel like, why can't I have this one thing where I exercise no skepticism and I just accept every claim that people make as true? Like, that's what I want to do. I'm being sarcastic. But if it's true, like, that definitely skews things quite a bit. And I can guess that his fans' response to this would be that it's okay for him to delete all these negative comments, all the people criticizing him and questioning him and disagreeing with him because those comments can prevent people from being healed by him because it leads to skepticism, which is bad somehow. That's obviously like not a good thing. Like you should be allowed to question anybody. You should be allowed to criticize anyone. You can come onto my channel and question and criticize me and I'm not gonna delete your comment or block you unless you're being like a super awful person. But when you do that, when you just only allow positive, uh, supportive comments on your social media pages, that creates hive mind or a group think kind of atmosphere. It gives me culty vibes. I'm not going to go into any sort of cult analysis in this video, but I do think it's possible that Anthony has kind of created a cult of personality for himself. I mean, just the way that his fans act is, is culty. Okay, it's culty. <laughs> People, a lot of them, like, it's really alarming. They don't question a single thing that comes out of his mouth. They treat him like he is a god. It's also been reported that he once solicited uh, positive, inspiring reviews on his book on Amazon in exchange for winning free consultations and some other things. So basically, he asked people to give the most inspiring review on his book and they could win all these prizes which is which is very unethical to reward people for giving you like five star reviews and whatever but anyways if a negative story does reach a lot of people rest assured the medical medium community will shut it down and make excuses or blame the person for doing something wrong for example when i announced that i was making this video uh someone dm'd me on instagram to defend medical medium i hadn't I hadn't even said anything about him other than I was making a video about him. I hadn't made, I hadn't criticized him at all, but that's the thing. It's like his fans do not respond to criticism in any other way than providing anecdotes. That is 100% of the time, without a doubt, what their go-to thing is. They will provide their own personal testimony or they will, will refer to the amount of positive testimonies and imply that that is confirmation that his claims are accurate. This person said to me, how do you explain his ability to tell people exactly what's wrong with them? He worked for like 35 years doing phone consultations and I've connected with many of these people. Within the first couple of minutes of talking on the phone, he goes over everything that's wrong with the person with complete accuracy. I've connected with so many people online who also tried everything and only got better with medical medium info. Of course, testimonials aren't formal scientific studies, but when so many people are reversing illnesses, I think we need to stay open to the possibility that there's something to this. When I brought up the fact that there are people with negative testimonials and who claim to have been uh, falsely diagnosed by Anthony, her stance on testimonies did a complete 180. She said, I know there are a few claims that his info hurt people, but unless you can verify that those claims are completely real, you can't assume they are. I've read some of these claims. Some are completely crazy and obviously not true. Beyond that, there are ways someone can become sicker that isn't related to anything medical medium told them. 
There's a lot that's out of our control, and just because Anthony talked to them doesn't guarantee they'll heal. They still have to use their free will and do things correctly. So I don't want to generalize all medical medium followers just based on what one person says, but I don't think she's the only person in the community that has this kind of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Why do we need to verify the negative claims, but the positive ones are taken as truth without any questioning? Like, we can't assume the negative claims are true, but we can assume the positive ones are. Why bring up that some of the negative claims are completely crazy and obviously not true? When I know this person would never think that about any of the positive claims, despite many of those being more of a conventional type of crazy, such as people completely healing themselves of incurable diseases. These crazy positive claims are just seen as further evidence by them that medical medium is amazing in doing the miraculous, but then the craziness of the negative claims is reason to write them off as false. If there are ways someone can become sicker while following medical medium protocols, but it's not because of the medical medium protocols, then why not also acknowledge that there are ways that people can become healthier while following medical medium protocols that are not related to the protocols? People would think of anything to dismiss the negative testimonials, but the positive ones are not given that same speculation and skepticism. If you're going to be skeptical, you should be skeptical of all types of claims. That's why I'm not sitting here in this video saying, oh, you know, so-and-so had a call with medical medium and he correctly diagnosed her with fibromyalgia. She didn't even have to tell him that she had it, he just knew and he was right. Or so-and-so was told that he had fibromyalgia by medical medium and he didn't. He went and got tested or whatever and he didn't have it. I'm not gonna sit here and list off positive and negative testimonials because I have no way to assess the validity of these claims. It doesn't matter if somebody has been correctly or incorrectly diagnosed by medical medium. It doesn't matter if his information has harmed or helped people. They could be lying, they could be misremembering, they could be mistaken about what caused the harm or what helped them. There could be placebo playing a role. That's why I'm treating positive, negative, and neutral testimonies all the same because they are just anecdotes and anecdotes are not data. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like they are. I think the conspiratorial thinking that's common in all med circles is one of the reasons why they don't trust the negative testimonials. Like one of the rules of the medical medium subreddit is no trolling. They say, a troll is a person who posts inflammatory insincere, digressive, off-topic, misleading, rude, and provoking comment. They stir up emotions and cause irritability purposely. These trolls can be paid to do this or not and mislead others away from the information of certain communities. The fact that they think that there's even a chance that somebody would pay another person to be a troll on the medical medium subreddit that has like 4,000 members is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. No one in the history of time has ever done that. People troll for their own entertainment. It's not like some side hustle people are doing. I don't know who they think would pay anyone to do this, Big Pharma? It's just some random person pays their friend because it's funny? I don't, I have no clue. But it's like, it's just ridiculous either way. And I, I just can't stand this type of like persecution complex conspiratorial thinking that every fringe movement has because they think they have some secret knowledge that a big organization doesn't want the public or the majority of people to know about it's it just drives me nuts i think anthony is partially responsible for the views that a lot of his fans have on this subject because the way that he responds to criticism and haters is quite comical. There have been a slew of articles and press on celery juice from naysayers who are still using the lack of funded research studies on celery juice to dismiss the obvious health benefits it provides. Every time a health expert, guru, doctor, dietitian, nutritionist, TV show, or any other person or source dismisses the healing properties of celery juice or says it's the same as eating a few stalks of celery or drinking a glass of water, they're also dismissing the chronically ill people who have shared their stories of healing with celery juice. 
They are saying that hundreds of thousands of people are liars and that their healing experiences don't count or matter. They are digressing back to the 1950s to 90s when women were told by their doctors that they were crazy, lying, and making their symptoms up, and medical science and research weren't offering any solutions. The naysayers of today are once again dismissing the chronically ill by ignoring their healing experiences with celery juice. They're telling hundreds of thousands of people who have shared their positive experiences that they're wrong, they aren't healing, they've never healed, and they weren't really sick in the first place. It's downright disrespectful. You know what's really funny though? On his Instagram, he has this highlight reel called Traps, where he reposted a video from someone saying, you are being lied to about ayahuasca. It is not an answer to healing your trauma. So using his own logic, what about the thousands of people who have shared their positive experiences healing their trauma with ayahuasca? By reposting a video, about how you shouldn't use ayahuasca to heal traumas and labeling it as a trap, isn't he dismissing tons of people? Saying that they're liars or that their trauma healing experiences don't count or matter? Why can he be a naysayer against this, but no, no one can be a naysayer against his science-deprived health beliefs without being called disrespectful and being compared to a 1900s misogynistic doctor? What would he say to all the people who believe they've benefited from drinking bleach, drinking their own urine, eating the carnivore diet. I think there's a lot of diets and lifestyles that he would dismiss, yet many people say they benefited from them. Once again, cognitive dissonance. So my final thoughts on Anthony William. He definitely does make some health claims that are backed up by science and I personally agree with, but much of what he promotes is stuff that he claims was told to him by a spirit. No one else has access to this info. There's no test for it. The medical community isn't aware of it yet, but the evidence is in the positive testimonials from his followers and that's that on that. People that are into this kind of stuff are the type to be like, don't knock it till you try it. Or basically, my opinions and observations are invalid because I have not personally done his protocols. I have not read his books. It's the same thing with Kong and Water. It's the same thing with MLMs. It's the same thing with Ayurveda and Deepak Chopra's teachings. It's the same thing with Joe Dispenza's retreats. It's the same thing with Law of Attraction and everything like that that I've talked about. These people only value anecdotes. And since I don't have an anecdote of my own to provide, everything I say is invalid. Every positive anecdote is valid and is evidence and every negative anecdote should be questioned or dismissed. It's funny because people who are into medical medium and the other things that I just listed, the go-to thing is to always just accuse people who don't believe in it of being closed-minded. But they're, they're apparently open-minded even though you could literally not say a single thing that would make them change their mind or make them question Anthony or his teachings. They've had their own personal experience, they've heard the experiences of other people, and that seals the deal for them. The lack of science doesn't matter, the negative testimonials doesn't matter, the lack of use of logic <laughs> doesn't matter. You could not say anything that would make them change their mind, but yet you're the one that's closed-minded. Everyone else who doesn't believe in them is always closed-minded. It's not closed-minded to wait for scientific evidence before believing in something. If there are studies done on the Epstein-Barr virus and we find that there are 60 varieties, there's study after study confirming it and it becomes like scientific consensus, I'm gonna believe that there are 60 varieties. I'll change my mind on that. I'll say, wow, it looks like Anthony was right. What I won't say is, Wow, he was right on this one thing, therefore everything else he says is accurate. A lot of people come to Anthony because they're experiencing debilitating health issues, and that makes people desperate. So sure, they might have been open-minded, but the reason they were open-minded is because they were desperate. I don't think medical medium acts the way I'd expect someone to act who had all this far advanced knowledge that could change the world by like, completely eradicating a ton of health issues. I think instead of writing books and offering expensive phone calls, like I said earlier, he would be more in the realm of encouraging research. And I don't really know how he'd go about that, but I'm sure he could figure it out himself. And I know this is where the big pharma conspiracies come in, but I really don't think they're going to put a hit out on him because 
he wants to fund a pilot study at a university for celery juice and autoimmune diseases. I personally feel like Anthony William is a fraud. I think he's a con artist. That's the only time I've ever said that in a video about somebody. It's not like uh, I just throw those terms around loosely to everyone who I don't like or don't agree with. And I really didn't have that belief going into this video. I wasn't sure what to think of him um, because I hadn't done that much research on him in the past. Um, but the more I researched, the more I read quotes from his books and his website, and the more I listened to him talk in videos, the more I just felt like he wasn't an honest person. I don't think he heard a spirit talk to him at four years old, or ever. I think it's a marketing gimmick. That's my opinion. It's not fact. I could be wrong. Even if you believe in spirits and mediums, I don't think it's wise to believe that everyone who ever claims to be a medium or be in contact with a spirit uh, actually is, because of course there are some people that are going to lie about that, and there's some people that are going to be misinterpreting their experiences and something else is going on mentally for them. I don't like Anthony at all. I'm glad his protocols have helped many people, but I think he's a narcissistic person who made this stuff up to feel special and superior. I think he's done research on health topics, found connections to things such as between like Epstein-Barr and cancer or MS. I think he's probably watched other doctors talk about things, read lots of research, um, and convinced his fans that this is all stuff that a spirit told him. He didn't do any research on this, and there's actually no research on this. He is the pioneer of all these health revelations, but he appeals to people who are not going to do any independent research. A lot of them may not know how to do research and find or read studies. And that's because the people he appeals to are desperate, and desperate people are just looking for answers. They're not concerned with digging through the details to figure out the truth, you know? I also think Anthony is very monetarily driven. I mean, charging $500 for a 30 minute call, that is an exorbitant amount of money. I mean, if you sign up to the top tier of my Patreon, we can have a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call for only $12.99 a month, US dollars. I too can diagnose you with Epstein-Barr virus with a 90% accuracy rating, not diagnosing anyone though. You can also get early access to my YouTube videos and everything from my other tier, which is $3.33 a month, um, like weekly live streams, and at least two exclusive secret vlogs a month. I'm even doing kind of a little behind the scenes filming today of me making this video. There's also a community discord you can join and the more people that become members, I think the more fun the live streams especially will be because then it won't just be me sitting there. Um, but you can check out the link in the description to that. But alas, I will wrap up the video. Let me know your negative thoughts down below. I don't even have to ask the medical medium fans to leave their comments because there's no way any of them watched to the end of the video. Uh, literally no one ever does that when they disagree with my videos. They like, and I know that because they comment things that if they had watched any more than five minutes into it, I would have addressed it and they wouldn't have had any point in needing to comment it. But I mean, what can you do? I mean, I would love for my videos to be able to reach people with opposing views and have them at least question their, their views even if they don't change their mind. But I think these types of videos or just critical, critical views in general don't easily reach people who are super, super passionate about something and super, super convinced about something. So it's more for people who are kind of on the fence or people who are just interested in the topic. That's kind of how I try to make my videos. But yeah, anyways, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching.